Hello and welcome to Property Summits, the show to tune into to find out all about the latest developments in the property world. I'm Emma Birchley and joining me today are five of the most experienced people in the business. Now, first off, we have Ranjan Bhattacharya, a man who's been developing and investing in property for 30 years. We also have Dave Ford, who has four decades in the construction business. Also joining me is Nicholas Warwick, an investor, developer and author, who's also the owner of wealthlabs.co.uk. We also have Richard Bush, founder of the crowdfunding platform Crowdlords, which provides more people with the chance to invest in property. And finally today, we have John Howard, a man who knows a thing or two about property, having bought and sold a staggering 4,000 houses, apartments and developments over more than 40 years in the industry. Hello, gentlemen. It's lovely to see you all. So, the government has um, house building targets. <laughs> do they really? You're laughing. How do they really? You're laughing. We've only just started. I'm You're sorry. already laughing. Yeah. House, building, house building dreams. Why are, are you dreams? laughing? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm laughing because the planning system in this country is totally at loggerheads with the government. And they can shout and scream about targets. And I was, I was in the House of Commons a while ago talking about this with the then housing minister. We've had about 10 since. Drives you crackers. Like prime ministers. Like prime ministers. Uh, just, just more of them. And uh, they, they're banging on about how they're going to force these councils to, to allow more housing to be built. And through PD, a couple of missed development, they have done a little bit of that. But, you know, no one wants a load of houses in their back garden. You know, if they live in the village, they don't want a massive, a massive uh, a development. And, and that is the problem. And if you're an MP and you're trying to get re-elected, you're going to support the local people to say, no, we don't want them here. So the whole thing is at loggerheads. And um, the truth is that we need to build 500 houses a year in this country. They're trying to build 300 last year, I think. So that's they, the target, that's isn't the it? Target. By the mid 2020s? Yeah. Uh, la <laughs> yeah. La last year, I think they built 210. This year, uh, with all the top house builders building 50, 40, 30% less, it'll be less than that. And of course, the house builders don't really care because the house builders, it's all about keeping prices up uh, and controlling the market. And they control 60 odd percent of the market. Now, the government are trying to break that monopoly. In 1970s, small house builders and people like all, all of us here were, were contributing something like 65% to the, to the housing um, target. These days, that's about 12%, 15%. The rest is made up, the rest is made up from um, housing associations, social housing and that type of thing. So they've created a bank called Homes England, this government have. And it'll be very interesting to see what Labour do if they get if they get in, whether they'll dissolve this bank. It is a massive bank and it's there, funded by the government, to lend on housing projects, new homes. Um, and they've done that to drive the housing market forward and to try and uh, stop um, the top 10 house builders having so much control. But of course, who do you think... Um, donates to the, to the Conservative Party, the top 10 <laughs> house builders in the UK. So the whole thing is, is, is just a big circle and I don't think anyone's going to break it. Um, why don't you think um, that housing targets are being met, Nicholas? Crikey. Um, well, there's obviously lots and lots of factors. The, the, the economic situation has been very poor for a number of years. Um, and when you chuck in pandemics, pandemic, yeah. and inflation rises on building materials, viability of sites, um, you can see why the big house builders will, will hold back a little bit on their stock um, to, as John said, control the pricing. They don't want to release stock and have to drop the price to sell it. That undermines the whole finish of their 5,000 unit scheme, maybe wherever it might be. So they need to hold off selling those for a couple of years until the prices return and they can achieve the values that they had planned to achieve. Otherwise, their shareholders will uh, be screaming at them because obviously they're all privately owned now. What do you think? Public owned, sorry. What do you think the problem is with targets? So I know they're I not keen. Uh, I think, well, just agreeing with John, which I hate to do, you might want to cut like that again. out. again. I want to cut that out. It might affect my reputation. Just cut that bit out. <laughs> but um, he's absolutely right at one point. Small house builders don't even account for... Um, small developers don't even account for 12% of the housing supply. These just uh, account for much more than 40%. And the reason for that is because it's, it's just become too complicated, too risky, 
and you can't fund and finance riskiness. Um, and that's partly because you've, there's no certainty as to whether you're going to get planning permission on a particular scheme. When you do get planning permission, you've got 50 plus conditions which you have to discharge yeah. before you can start building. Mm -hmm. And also, um, they are, it, it seems as though they are putting these targets out and they're expecting people to take entrepreneurial risk to mm -hmm. deliver them, but constantly kick them in the shins you know, with, well, okay, then if you get past that, here's some affordability ha um, target, here's some social tar uh, uh, housing target. And then it makes, the, and then there's the um, energy performance. I mean, you know, it all sounds great to be all Greta Thornburg, but a lot of this EPC stuff is tick box. You know, it's do this little thing, you know, and you suddenly get these points. So, it, you know, you can gerrymander these scores around. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are getting a fantastically efficient home. And, uh, so, uh, and some of these materials and stuff, you know, cost a lot of money that you put into um, houses and flats for marginal benefits. This all goes to affect the viability of smith schemes, particularly small schemes. And the large house uh, builders, they like building on green field because they want economies of scale, 100 houses in a field. But actually, we want to make use of more brownfield sites. And that's when, you know, the PD schemes come in where you're just building three, four flats and that kind of thing. And the big house developers, they're not going to do that because it doesn't make sense for them. So you, they, the government really needs small time developers like the people watching this program mm -hmm. to chip into these sure. targets and turn, uh, you know, yeah. little disused car parking you're, you're, spaces you're and all of that right. into two or three houses. And that's why Homes England now, you can, they will go as low as funding five houses mm -hmm. for a small developer. The only problem with that, and we borrowed, you know, 15 odd million off them a while ago, with this, with the, and I went and spoke around the country supporting Homes England, promoting, promoting what they do. And the one question I got asked all the time was, uh, how, easy, how easy and how quick can you get the money off Homes England? I had to be quite diplomatic because uh, <laughs> they were paying for me to go around the country. Um, and I said, not as slow as you might think. <laughs> I thought it was a good answer. Uh, there we go. Like so, a politician. You're a politician. Uh, well, so well. I've, been, I've been accused of that in the past. <laughs> Um, how much um, is the like soaring construction costs a, a play here when it comes to um, encouraging people to build and hitting those targets? Yeah, well, um, when you talk about any government targets, I mean, targets for NHS, reducing illegal immigration, building new houses, I mean, it, it does it matter? You it's know? a plucked number. It's, look, um, where, where I live... Um, it's in a quite picturesque village now. Over the last 10 years, they've built nearly 400 new homes. It's not a picturesque, desirable village anymore, okay? It's just a built-up urban place. And as John said, no, no one wants it in their backyard. But I was at a construction event several weeks ago. I was talking to a couple of members of the House of Lords, and um, they were discussing this initiative where they would make funding available for people to build um, using modern methods of construction, MMC for short, um, modular, which is where the houses just come built and plonked down. Now, if if that happens, and they, they want to target brownfield sites in the cities, um, sort of disused factories, you know, clear the site, that could be a possibility. But... Uh, to, to build whatever it is, John, 300,000 new homes a year a with joke. the uncertainty in the market, yeah. people losing their jobs, interest yeah. rates, yeah. rising build costs. Not going to happen. Is it going to happen? The reality yeah. is it, it's not, you know. But lots of little opportunity for the person who wants to jump in, build one house, four hours, definitely. Yeah. So what's the, from what you're all saying, is the issue that there isn't the opportunity for smaller house builders to buy the land to build it, i.e. that the the larger ones are land banking and, and it's not available yeah. to other people? No. Or is it that there isn't the desire to take the risk to build at the moment because well, I, of the... I, I, think, I think one of the problems with brownfield sites is that, that these sites have got to be cleaned up. They're called brownfield because yeah. some, something else has been on them before. So you've got contamination, you saw soil reports, asbestos problems, maybe it's drainage a load, problems. Load more, uh, it's a load more, load more start, protective, isn't it? And, and, for the, <coughs> and, and for a small house build, yeah, with yeah. all due respect to them, yeah. That's yeah, just too much for them. It's too much risk. Uh, and that's, of course, why the big house builders don't want to do it either, by the way, because they don't want to clear sites up. They want to go on a clean site, yeah. get on with it, 
bang. And they've put these houses up pretty quick, not as quick as, as, as the modular type schemes I accept, but they still put them, put them up pretty quick. You know, one minute you drive past and there's virtually nothing there. Next minute, you know, it's three months later, it's a proper little community almost. So it's, it's, a, ma it's a major, major problem. And of course, uh, the more, and Ranjan's right, the more, the more issues that are put, more challenges that are put with, with, with all these preconditions that need to be dealt, dealt with, all the, you know, all the social housing requirements and so on to these sites, it, 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 it really is complicated. Now, a, free, a phrase that we hear a lot about now is levelling up, don't we? We and do. <clears throat> these these t um, housing targets are partly about mm. that agenda. Surely that is a good thing, isn't it, Richard? Because yeah. we want to be giving people homes and letting yeah. everyone have a chance. In, in theory, it's a good thing. The, the, the question is, how do they make it a reality? Because of all the things we've discussed, you know, it's, idea, it's, it's okay to say that in principle. It's pie in the sky, actually, though. Well, to okay. deliver it is harder. It takes a more yeah. rounded approach rather than just a, a, a you know, fractional approach. Can I just say the town fund, which is a fund uh, which 110 councils have got now, uh, they've, you, have, you apply for it, um, and it's billions, a 4.2 billion pounds worth of government funding to, to um, improve town centres. You get a maximum of 25 million, so that's a start. So anyone looking, watching this show and thinking, well, where should I invest? See where this money's being spent, because on the back of that, you can, you can perhaps benefit on the back of it. Um, and interesting, Morecambe Seafront has got the most money. They've got... Um, I think 300, 240 million or something to improve their seafront and, and, and to increase their, their housing around there and all sorts of things. So there's a lot going on. And, and of course, levelling up is about the north-south north, north -south divide and all the rest of it. But if I said to you that nearly every, every town that's got this fund, for instance, town fund, how many of them do you think are conservative constituencies? 90%? Lots of them. Funny that, yeah, most <laughs> yeah. of them. A chunk of them. But all this levelling up shouldn't come at the expense of levelling down uh, better areas. And the thing is, yeah, you get all this funding and all of that, and they paint the lampposts and uh, put a couple of trees on the high street or whatever it is. But that doesn't mean that suddenly people want to live in Grimsby. The reason, there's a reason why Grimsby is called Grimsby. You know, and there's no oh, be careful. painted lamps. Grimsby so isn't here to defend be itself. To, to be fair, there. Ranjan, you have never people ever... People want to live where they want to live. You have never been outside the M25. Well, once or twice. <laughs> so let's not, let's not kid yourself that I've, I've been to Grimsby. I know Grimsby. And, and how um, is Grimsby? Well, it's like every town and city is the same. It's got good areas in it where people, affluent people want to live and aspire to live in those areas, and there's poor areas. And that, that, I don't care if it's Liverpool, London, wherever you go, it's the same thing. Um, but it, this town fund is important because, you know, if, 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 if the government are helping improve these town centres, then that's got to be good for the local area, the local economy, the local housing, and, every, and it encourages other investors to come in and invest. And that's really important. But it doesn't address all the barriers that we've talked about. It no, doesn't. Availability, no. No, but it's, it's a start in the right direction. I mean, I, I think the challenge is massive. We've got a massive housing issue in the UK because there's more and more people wanting to live here and everything else. You know, the government can only do so much. Well, the, prob the problem is that we've got to take this one level higher than just a housing discussion. I think this is kind of like a whole of England yes. running the country issue. Um, you know, I'm, I am personally of the opinion that a lot of the country is going downhill in many respects. I think we've been poorly run for a number of decades, including under Labour um, and, and various I think you're um, totally, governments. utterly wrong. I think you need to be confident about this country. It's a fantastic country. So many people want to come and live here. Instead of trashing it and, 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 and being depressing about everything, we've got so much going for us in this I country. Agree, it's agree. a fantastic country. I think we do. You should be we, proud well, of where you live. Yeah, but we've got that, the problem is I'm not. I'm losing. I'm losing that. You know, I look at some of my towns and the homelessness rates going through the roof. They're not dealing with many housing issues. You know, we're getting hit higher on an entrepreneurial level. If you want to be an entrepreneur, well, guess what? We're now getting 25% corporation tax for all the entrepreneurs that want to start. Push all the property investors and developers, this small minority, 12% into your corporations over the last few years with this Section 24 tax. 
And guess what? We're going to whack you at 25% corporation tax now. So they're stunting entrepreneurialism. They're stopping the smaller guys from work and, and going out and building a business. John, one moment. And what's worse is that they're trying to push it into the hands of the bigger players, possibly into social housing providers. We're going to end up into a social state before long. I'm disappointed to hear that from you. That's why I'm leaving the country. <laughs> you clear the mess up. He's bailing. What I, what I would say is that <clears throat> we have had, you know, we've had COVID, of everything. We're very, very generous. Not many countries were as generous as we were to help people through that. Agreed. And, and that, it, that comes at a cost. Everything comes at a cost. Yes, I would agree. This government at the moment are more like a Labour government. But my goodness, what does that mean a Labour government are going to be like if they get in? God forbid. I might come and join you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make up the spare room. That doesn't sound like a great advert. You know, uh, um, this lot are uh, uh, bad, but not as bad as the uh, <laughs> lot that could come in. That sounds like the uh, argument we're getting. I mean, look, you get growth in an economy by um, encouraging an entrepreneurial spirit. And I think we have lost that we direction. Have. And I hate to say it, but um, I mean, in many respects, Tony Blair is one of the best prime ministers we've had for entrepreneurs uh, and business owners in terms of um, the things that he introduced, uh, which the Conservatives have subsequently um, tailed back on. Things like entrepreneurs' relief, things like pension contributions, direct to pension contributions. Uh, the, the Conservatives have railed back on things that Tony Blair brought in. High corporation tax. High corporation. Going back to government targets, though, unlike other industries like NHS and all of that, you know, um, the, the, the housing target. They're not relying on government employees to deliver them. Thank God for that. You know, we are not government employees. So either they decide to take control of it and build a lot themselves, and we'll have Soviet blocks all over the place, or if you want us not to do it, there has to be some entrepreneurial reward for taking risk. Because if I'm going to have yeah. to put my, the food on my kid's table at risk, then there has to be some reward for doing And there that. is a lot of risk at the moment. Um, there is, there, I, I think, I'm not saying that there is um, uh, no reward at all. I think there is reward if you know what you're doing, but it's not enough to deliver the targets that they've got. Yeah, agree. Well, just on that, um, we've gone back through the Thatcher and Blair era, so if we couldn't get on to this current levelling up. Anyone who bought a house on the new Crossrail route when it was announced saw the value of their house triple when Crossrail was finished. The levelling up is going from Euston up to Manchester and Leeds. There's, regardless of government targets, economic situations, interest rate, there's got to be opportunities there for small self-builders to get on that route and, and make some money. I think that's a very positive, positive comment and I think it's right. The other thing I would say is this government is the first government since before Thatcher, uh, Conservative government, to allow councils to build houses. Yeah. Oh, right. Which is amazing <clears throat> really to think a Conservative government is allowing local authorities of all, shape, all shapes yeah. to borrow yeah. and build houses. Yeah. yeah, which you're absolutely yeah. right, to borrow and build houses. It's yeah. amazing. But John, I mean, like, so we're more Labour than we are Conservative. But John, the problem with what the councils have done is they've spent this money um, because they're not entrepreneurs. They've bought commercial property portfolios. They've paid stupid money for uh, these sort of things. And many of these, some councils have actually gone bust. And it is, I think it's wrong, actually, for councils to take uh, council taxpayers' money, essentially, um, and then, and then um, have the unlevel playing field of better borrowing than us lot and then have make poor business decisions and it, then stuff it up the wall. Ranjan, it's worse than that. I, I was looking around a, a, a large uh, uh, Lloyds Bank building the other day, uh, looking to purchase it. And there's five people from the council viewing it as well, yeah. looking to buy it. Now, how is that fair? I can't compete with them in terms of interest rates or anything else. They shouldn't be doing that. They should be doing it business. What they should be doing is, is buying land that, that, that needs tidying up, clearing up in terms of contamination. They should be buying that land and, selling it on. and, and clearing it up and enabling it to be sold and built and so people can build houses on it. That's what they should be doing with the money, not competing as on a commercial basis. So just to conclude here, 
when we look at these government targets, in reality, let's leap ahead, say, five years or something. Do we think that 300,000, as things stand, as the rules are, is an achievable target? Richard, first with you. Um, it's achievable. Will we achieve it? I, I, I can't say. I mean, it depends what happens with the government and what policies they Oh, implement. don't sit on the fence, will you? No, but let me finish. Yeah. It is achievable. That was the question. Is it achievable? It's achievable. It's achievable if there's a comprehensive policy that addresses all the things that So we, things that need to change for it to be achievable? Yeah, but it also has to be a collective approach. It's interesting that the discussion is that there's the yeah. government on one side. I don't mean collective as in the left. It was a simple collective. question, Richard. It needed a simple answer. And the answer is <laughs> yes. no. No, not yes. achievable. Yes. No, yes. won't be achieved. No. That's yes. Okay. Yes. No. I'm going to say no. It's Expand not, briefly. Why is it not achievable? Um, I just don't. I just don't see it happening. No chance. I just don't see it happening. Because there's too many <coughs> barriers in the way. Too many barriers. Just, just the uncertain wow. current economic climate, house builders holding back, and just five years, two years, and that will be lost before there's any confidence yep. and. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah completely plus. agree. Completely wrong economic climate to be hitting targets. We'll be lucky to hit two thirds of that target in the next two or three years. Yeah. And five years, maybe. Let's no, see. for a reason we haven't yet covered. Green belt. I mean, we have a silly system. I mean, less than 10% of land is built on in the UK. Uh, other countries have national parks and they preserve all of that and they have zoning systems. We strangle all our cities with a green belt, uh, as which strangles the amount of land that can be built on. So designate, until we uh, do what other countries do and designate areas as being national parks or areas that you want to protect, allows, allows cities to grow They did that in 1948. Uh, well, we need to do it again. 1948, I wasn't around then. <laughs> it was a long time ago, John. John was in his it's 40s. time for a bit of a rethink. <laughs> I walked into that one, didn't I? Yeah, okay, 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 yeah. I think that's a brilliant point at which to conclude it all. Round up. Thank you all very much. My pleasure. And thank you very much for joining us here on Property Summit. See you next time.